G-Man Boxing. Do you know what I mean? Every single live he donates. I see him on other lives donating, donating, donating. He's got the bag on it. All right, people. Midweek report time. So, where to start with this? I think we will start with the event that happened on Sunday, which was obviously Floyd Mayweather stopping Deji. I think that's how you pronounce his name. In six rounds. Not really going to talk about that fight itself because as I said, well, it wasn't really a fight, was it really? It was more an exhibition. But we'll talk about John Fury on the undercar taking his shirt off, letting it all hang out, and having a go with Jake Paul and really going for him as well. Like he really, you could tell. See, with John Fury, some people kind of think that when John Fury is really getting up, you know, obviously he wasn't in Jake Paul's face, but because he was restrained. But when he's behaving like that, people, some people think it's a joke. Whilst you can look at it and laugh at it, I don't think he's playing. Like when he squared up to Deontay Wilder in Belfast at that weigh-in, Wilder, you could tell, and I think a lot of people as well thought, ah, he's joking, because Wilder even went to shake his hand, and then you kind of realise, actually, no, no, he, he's not playing. Now, the, the Wilder situation, would you have put a penny on John Fury winning? I wouldn't have. But John Fury definitely don't play around when it comes to these kind of things. And with regards to the whole Tommy Fury, Jake Paul, so Jake Paul sent out this tweet to Frank Warren where he says, I agreed to fight Tommy in Manchester or London in February. I'll come to his country. No more running. His baby's due. Then you've said it's no issue. Since John is adamant we've signed, I'm giving you seven days to present the signed contract by Tommy Fury or I'm moving on. Wow, that's interesting. Didn't Team Fury in the run-up to the AJ fight, which never, well, obviously the AJ fight never happened, but didn't Tyson say to AJ, you have so many days to sign the contract, otherwise I'm moving on? So maybe that's Jake Paul doing a bit of, you know, a taste of their own medicine in that sense. The Jake Paul-Tommy Fury fight. Look, I know a lot of people have said this. I always have to reiterate this because a lot of people don't like the whole Jake Paul-Tommy Fury thing. They don't like the whole YouTube thing in general. To be honest with you, I really don't mind it. You know, are there, like, did I watch the card? Sorry, the card on Sunday? No, I didn't. I have no real interest in it. There are some kind of YouTube fights that I would watch. This one, although, you know, at the end of the day, it's weird because Jake Paul is the YouTuber, but I see him as being more of a professional than Tommy Fury. So what way would you actually call this one? I'm interested in this one because for, for several reasons. One, you know, it is a legit boxer. Well, say legit boxer. Tommy Fury officially is more legit than we'll say... What's the guy's name? Tyrone Woodley or 47-year-old Anderson Silva. You'd be more legit than them guys. So it'd be interesting to see how this fight goes. If it happens, I personally think Jake Paul would win. I think Tommy Fury is just garbage. I really don't... Again, like when I look at how... And the word unprofessional is that like, you miss weight by seven pounds and it looks like you spent the whole year camp in a weight in a weight gym and you've not improved in four years as a pro. You fought eight times as a pro Half of your opponents have never even had a win in many, many, many fights. So, I mean, can you really say professional? I mean, answers on a postcard there. In terms of that fight, it's a big fight. Warren would want to get that fight done. Because, again, it's just a, for him, that's just a big fight that he could sell, basically. You know, Warren even said, um, I think we've got a good chance of getting it on over in the UK, probably in late February, early March. Jake is up for coming over. So we've got to get the deal finalized this week. Now, there's also been a bit of talk about that fight maybe happening in Dubai. Whether that does or not, I do not know. In other news, is this a misfit show? I no, I don't think it is. But Hasim Rackman, I don't know how this made the news, was meant to fight a guy called Greg Hardy in a heavyweight clash this Saturday. Uh, oh no, he will fight Greg Hardy this Saturday because he was meant to fight Vito Bellator, Belfort. I guess how you say that. The guy who beat Holyfield in that exhibition. Yeah, he pulled out with the Holocaust. So Hasim Rackman, I mean, junior, he, again, not really looked particularly good at all. Tank Davis has indicated that he will be out in January. Now, I'm just getting kind of the news, just kind of news to come out over the last day or two. I'm just kind of going through that bit by bit and getting that kind of out of the way. So Tank Davis back in January. Not against Ryan Garcia. you think they would have announced it by now. But hopefully we can see him against Garcia next year. Now the interesting thing here is Canelo Alvarez. So Canelo, 
Obviously, he's planning his return to the ring in May of next year. So we won't be seeing Canelo until May of next year. He fought in September. He ain't fighting until May this coming year. Okay. Now, a lot of people were asking the question, who would he be in there with? Who is he going to fight? Is he going to fight Bivol again? Is he going to fight a Charlo? Benavidez? Well, the Benavidez plant winner will be mandated for Canelo. And I believe Alvarez has an IBF mandatory due. I cannot... T I think it's a Cuban fighter, if I'm not mistaken. I can't think of his name. But that's going to be due soon. And we, as we know, the IBF don't play around. And they have stripped Canelo in the past. I think they stripped him down at 160 pounds uh, of the IBF title when he didn't fight Derevchenko. So... Canelo is undisputed at 168, might not be undisputed for much longer. But he's indicated that he'll be back in May. The plan for Alvarez, and this is good news for Eddie Hearn too. This is good news because he's indicated that he's going to have a tune-up fight in May and then Dimitri Bivol rematch in September. Now, this is probably good news for Eddie Hearn in a sense of he's probably guaranteed another two fights with Canelo on his DAZN deal. But it's bad news for people who are fans of the Undisputed and Bivol versus Baturbiev. Now, Baturbiev I'll talk about now in a little bit. But Baturbiev is likely going to be fighting Yard next year, early next year. Depending on how that fight goes, would they have a turnaround to be able to get Bivol versus Baturbiev over the line before Canelo looks to get that rematch on? Because I genuinely think Bivol... If you asked him, what would you rather have? Would you rather the big Canelo payday? Or would you rather fight Baturbiev for all the marbles? I fully believe Bivol will turn around and say, I've beaten Canelo once. Yeah, it's a big payday. But I'm chasing legacy. I want undisputed. Now, Bivol, when he fought Ramirez, that wasn't a grueling fight. Yeah, it went 12 rounds. But, I mean, you know, the defense of Bivol is tremendous. Ramirez had a couple of rounds where he was successful, but that's really it. So it wasn't a grueling fight by any stretch. So he should be good to go next year, early enough next year. The yard, well, I'll talk about that now in a wee bit. But in terms of a tune-up fight for Alvarez, I mean, that's a weird one. I mean, who would you actually, who, who, would, who would you deem him to have a tune-up fight against? I mean, if ever someone is owed a tune-up fight, you would say it's Alvarez, to be honest with you, because like, you know, let's just look at let's just look at what he's done. You know, whether you like Canelo or not, let's just have a look at what he's done over the last few years. So he beats Danny Jacobs in 2019, then he fights Sergei Kovalev, and then he fights Callum Smith. He has that mandatory just to get it out of the way against Yildon, and we'll just tick that one off. That was February last year. And then he fights Billy Joe Saunders, and then he fights Caleb Plant, and then he fights and loses to Dimitri Bivol, and then he fights Triple G a third time. People, I think he's allowed. A tune-up fight. I think he's allowed an easier touch. And knowing Alvarez, his easier touch won't be that. You'd probably look and just think, well, that's a bit, that's a, that's an interesting opponent for a tune-up, you know. So I think we're, we can allow Alvarez that tune-up fight. Um, be interesting to see who it's against. The winner of Parker Ryder? Because you could simply would say, well, that's a mandatory. I wouldn't put Parker or Ryder anywhere in the same stratosphere as Canelo. So you can say it's a mandatory, but technically speaking, you know, I, I consider that a, a reasonable tune-up fight. So have a look there. And obviously, if it's last I checked, John Ryder was still a matchroom fighter. So if John Ryder wins, you'd think that'd be an easy enough fight to make Ryder versus Alvarez. You know? If it's um Zach Parker. Well, Zach Parker has fought on matchroom shows before. I know he's promoted by Frank Warren. So obviously there's that. But I would imagine it wouldn't be crazy hard, you know. I mean, I'm sure Warren will be like thinking, hang on a minute, you know, you're going to get that Canelo money? Yep, go over there, fight him on the zone, bring it back to Queensbury. There we go. And as in, bring the money back to Queensbury, not the win. <laughs> I don't think any of us are going to pick Zach Parker to beat Canelo. Canelo was also asked about how he feels the Benavidez plant would go. He says, it's a very competitive fight. I see Benavidez winning. I agree, I think that as well. But his focus is on the Dimitri Bivol rematch. Very interesting. So he seems definitely looking to go down the road of fighting Dimitri Bivol again. So we'll see, certainly see how that goes and see how it is. In terms of some of the up-and-coming pay-per-views we have, do you know something? It doesn't get any easier for fans because we're coming into Christmas now. We obviously know inflation and all that, you know, you know what is true to roof. So income is a bit kind of tight at the minute. Well, listen to this. 
obviously we know the Fury which is our pay-per-view is coming up on December 3rd I won't be paying for that then in January 14th KSI is going to have pay-per-view I won't be paying for that Liam, Liam, sorry, Liam Smith versus Chris Eubank Jr. is reportedly set to take place on January the 21st. Now, I would expect an announcement of that oh, in the coming days, maybe even probably early next week. Because Liam Smith was obviously interviewed at the fights that happened last weekend on the Boxer Show. And he basically said, look, I can't comment on anything, but expect you know there's news coming with a big smile on his face and he even he even said look i'm not good at hiding things so we all know fight sight and sealed we know that like i mean liam smith basically admitted it without admitting it you know the body language gave it all away so january the 21st in the uk the venue is yet to be decided but here's the interesting thing right here's the interesting thing it's reported that the fight's gonna land on pay-per-view yes sky pay-per-view I like Chris Eubank Jr. I think he's fun to watch. I have a lot of respect for Liam Smith. But I'm sorry, that's not a pay-per-view fight. It's just not. It's a good fight. It's a very good fight. But it's not a pay-per-view fight. Not in my opinion. Not not in my opinion. I don't think that's a pay-per-view fight. Fast forward one week later. And, alright, so... Anthony Yard, we obviously know he's fighting this weekend. Okay? He's fighting in Telford, which I think is in Shropshire. I think it is. I think that borders Wales as well, Shropshire. It's right on the kind of border between wales and uh, england geography lesson there i think it is anyway but he's fighting some pretty bulgarian the guy's fighting this weekend i would imagine he's going to be a pretty easy straightforward win for anthony yard but the rumor is is that the fight is already signed and sealed him and baturbiev that's the rumor anyway. that fight is signed and sealed and it's going to be announced to take place not in the o2 arena Right, I'm here in the Wembley Arena, which is, I think it's the OVO Arena, is what it's called. Now, the Wembley Arena is smaller than the O2. I've been to the Wembley Arena. I've never been in the O2. I've been past it several times. I've heard the O2 is not the easiest to get in and out of. I mean, I know you could just get the Jubilee Line straight to Greenwich if you're in London, and it brings you to the O2, but I heard it's not the easiest to get in and out of. Whereas, again, you get the Jubilee Line straight up to Wembley, uh, wherever you are in London, Um and you're pretty much at, well, you, you walk down Wembley Way and you're pretty much there at the OVO Arena. OVO Arena is a lot smaller, but it looks bigger on TV, but it's actually quite a nice little arena. But they're talking about putting that on pay-per-view too. I, I just don't see how, like there's two pay-per-view, or three now in a minute when you hear this one. But there's three fights, I just don't see either of them being pay-per-view. You know, you have Smith Eubank, honestly like, I like the fight, but pay-per-view, I don't think so. But Turby Yard, love the fight, go try and get over for that one. Especially if it's in Wembley, because I know Wembley. I've uh, been there before. Definitely try and get over for that one. And then the week after, you've got Taylor Catrell, reportedly as well, on pay-per-view. I mean... Uh, I can't see any of these fights. And Taylor Catrell last year was on Normal Sky. When it was an undisputed fight. So, I don't know how you justify putting all these in. And two of these are... You know, I got it. Look, I'm just going to say it, you know. You can't... You gotta call it as it is. You gotta be objective, right? There's four. There's sorry, five pay per views. One of them is the Zone, who did say they would be ending pay per views, but AO. And the other ones are Sky and BT. And in my opinion, none of these should be on pay per view. But the fact that Sky and BT are putting fights like this on pay per view, they're great fights. Don't get me wrong, but these are not household names. I don't think it, and again, at a time where everything is a lot more expensive, like it's expensive for BT Sports, expensive for Sky, as it is, as a standalone, much less having to fork out extra 20 quid, give or take, for pay-per-view. So if you ask me, honestly, I wouldn't pay for any of them. I wouldn't pay for any of them. I'd be, um, I'll try and get to the Paterby of Yard fight. I wouldn't pay for the Liam Smith fight at Eubank, nor would I any of the others. But um, yeah, they're reaching big time. They really are reaching big time for that. In terms of other news, um, oh, and here's an extra kick in the teeth to pay-per-view as well. Boxing Scene are reporting that Bob Arum is actually hoping to put Devin Haney versus Lomachenko on ESPN, not on pay-per-view. Now, there's a fight right there, Lomachenko versus Haney, that if it was on pay-per-view, you know, and obviously this side of the pond it wouldn't be anyway, but... You kind of could give him a bit more of a, okay, fair enough with that one. But to put, that's 
bad form, put all them pay-per-views on, and then a fight like that against arguably one and no, number one and number two in the division, and not put that on pay-per-view in the US, that's bad form. In terms of Haney versus Lomachenko, you know what? I love this fight. I love it. I love Haney Lomachenko. I think Haney's improving, but I I feel that Vasily Lomachenko, one day inactivity didn't help him in his last fight, and I think as well maybe Loma was expected an easier time than he got from Ortiz, and maybe Lomachenko, maybe I don't want to say disrespect to Ortiz. Maybe he just thought, okay, this is going to be a fairly run of the mill, easy enough performance. I don't need to be at my optimum to beat this guy, and he didn't look amazing against Devin Haney. I can see Lomachenko, he'd have to, because he's going to get beaten if he doesn't, given 110% and really going in there. Will that be enough to beat Devin Haney? Because I've been very impressed with Devin Haney. However, when I look at him against Cambosis, as good as Cambosis is, and Cambosis isn't one of these fighters where, like, you look at him, he's lost twice to Devin Haney. Oh, he was a hype job. Cambosis is a very, very good fighter. Very good fighter. He just isn't as good as Devin Haney. Stylistically, Devin Haney is just going to have Cambosis' number. That's the way it is. But Lomachenko, although you could say that Cambosis likes to apply pressure, as does Loma, Loma's footwork is night and day compared to Cambosis. And I can see him really giving Devin Haney some problems. Do I think Loma will win? I think at this stage, probably not. I would say that more than likely, if you ask me, we're looking at a win for uh, Devin Haney. But I definitely see this as being a very, very, very live fight. And it's a fight that I really, really want to see. Now, speaking of the Eubank Jr. versus Liam Smith fight, obviously, as I said, that was it's reported that's going to be on pay-per-view. Whether it is or not remains to be seen. That's what's being reported. But one of the car fights that's going to be on the undercards, allegedly, is Richard Riakpour versus Christoph Glowacki on the undercard. It literally seems like he is fighting, you know... I would have liked to have seen... And this might, and I think this is a reasonable step up. I would have liked to have seen Riakpour fight... Is it Seslak? Michael Seslak, the guy who Coley fought last year. That would have been a great step up. Glowacki, I was favouring Lawrence Coley every single day of the week and twice on a Sunday going into the fight with Glowacki last year. I don't think he's got any better since then. In fact, Glowacki's probably regressed. So I think that, yeah, for Riakpour, it's going to be a win over a former champion. But I would have rather seen him go in there against someone like Seslak. If you really want to test him, put him in with someone like Seslak. Seslak's a good opponent. Speaking of Lawrence Okoli, Ben Shalom has revealed that he under, it's his understanding that Okoli is now out. He's finished, he's done with his matchroom contract and is now speaking to different promoters. Now, Lawrence Okoli, he's been quite vocal. What vocal? He's been on social media without naming names and saying things. You could tell that he's, he's not best pleased with Eddie Hearn. I got the impression that tweets he was saying about being kept away and not given the chance to provide, that was one of them. And it was like a little picture, I think, where he had or wrote it or something like that. Anyway, I can't remember. But I took that to mean, all right, he's not happy with Eddie Hearn. We already knew that based upon quotes he made in the summer. So it looks like he's a free agent now. Because I was wondering how he's going to have to fight. If he had one fight left on his deal, he's going to have to fight. So it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. And it looks like he's going to be a free agent. I would imagine that they're going to, Sky are going to try and snap him up. And Lawrence Akali, I mean, he Lawrence Akali doesn't put butts in seats. He doesn't, right? He just, he doesn't. He's not the most entertaining fighter in the world, but he's a very, very good cruiserweight. He's an excellent cruiserweight. And he is a great addition to someone stable. If he could just, it's, it's not even that he has to go in there like Blood Guts or Toro Gaddy style. But I just think that when he sees a real threat from the opponent, he goes into almost autopilot mode, which is just kind of right, jab and grab. Use your physical strength to nullify the opponent. Very effective against the opponent, but God damn, it makes for unpleasant viewing for the fans. It really does. It really does. Um, Mikhail Lala. I think it's how you pronounce that, will face David Jemison for the British Cruiserweight title. Jemison going to take that fight on 10 days notice. The original opponent sadly had to pull out and actually retire with a detached retina. His name escapes me. But whenever you hear that, it is just so not nice hearing that. When, an, when Not just the fact that he has to pull out with an injury, but it's an injury so bad. And detached retinas are no joke. 
cost him his career. That's that's really that's crap. That's absolutely crap when that happens. In terms of some of the other news that's been going around, obviously I've seen that Clemus has been kind of saying that look, you know, with regard and that's Usek's manager by the way, that look the IBF have made a ruling on the you know mandatory situation. But that doesn't mean, you know, they're still looking to try and get this Fury fight over the line, hopefully for undisputed. Now, I take that to mean that they're maybe looking to go down the step-aside road, get that checkbook out and say, right, look, I'm going to start writing zeros. Let me know when you're happy. Because I hope, at the end of the day, right, there, there are two reasons why I want to see this fight, right? Undisputed, right? Undisputed is what I want. That's what that's my preference. That's my priority in heavyweight boxing and all the divisions that we have an undisputed champion. But as well as that, you have the consensus one and two in the division, right? If you have another belt out there just stagnating, now we don't count the IBO, but the IBF, which is a major one, over there with, say, a Joshua, a Ruiz, a Hergovic, it's just someone else there and you're, you're just like, no, these are the two guys. These have to meet. It has to be for Undisputed. That's what we want to see. I want to see these guys go at it. We all want to see Undisputed. That is, personally for me, that's my preference. Undisputed. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully something can be put in place so we can get this resolved. In terms of everything else, I think we are pretty much good to go with the news. Like I said, I'm doing this Thursday because yesterday there just wasn't enough news. I wanted to get that Conor Ben video out anyway. And I also had to finish off an audio recording for a documentary that I got planned that we should hopefully have out for you guys, hopefully in the next week or so, maybe a few days, but hopefully in the next week. And we will, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a little, probably about a 20 minute documentary, maybe a bit less, but it's going to be a good one. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Smash the like button. I've got more planning for the end of the week. May even, depending on how things go tomorrow, even try and get a live in. You never know. You know me with the lives. I like doing them. But, yeah, we'll keep an eye on any of the news. If it's news, it's going to be on here. You know how I do it. You know how I do on here. But for now, lads and lassies, I hope you're having a great week. We're near the end of it now. we got fights to look forward to this weekend. And then, obviously, we're into fight week for three cards. Adam Azim versus Charlton. Great fight. Can't wait to see that on a Sunday afternoon. Looking forward to that. Dylan White versus Jermaine Franklin. Preview the card. And we'll do a prediction video for that as well. And of course, John Ryder versus Zach Parker. Really excited about that fight. I hope to God that they don't clash in terms of this fight is on at this time and the fight is on at the same time. I'm hoping that they're kind of spread out a bit. Because honestly, I'd rather... I want to, I want to watch both of them. I want to see how Dylan White looks to see... Just how bad he's regressed following the Tyson Fury loss. But I also really want to see Parker versus Ryder. I mean, that could be... The, the winner, based upon what Canelo was saying, I think the winner likely faces Canelo. Seriously, I think the winner likely faces him. So there could be a lot of money. There could be a lot of cash on the line for the winner of that fight. A serious amount. As tie M Boot would say, they got the bag, don't they? Now, actually, he's just talking about me. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get that in there but now lads i'll leave you with that i hope you enjoyed the video people smash the like button if you could hit subscribe if you haven't already i'll talk to these people peace